thanks everyone for joining in today. Uh, we've got an exciting story to tell you, and it's myself here, Rob Sennett, President and CEO of Blue Thunder, and Oren Baranowski, the CFO of Blue Thunder. So I'll get right into it. We have a, um, a little bit to cover here. I'll go through the presentation and leave some time at the end for Q&A if anyone has any questions. So let's uh, see if I can share the screen here and uh, we'll get started. All right. Um, just to start off, I, I will be making a few forward-looking statements, so uh, please log on to our website or um, that and download our presentation and, and read some of these um, important statements that we'll be making. So let's start off. We're in the Shibugumu Chape mining camp uh, in Quebec, a very exciting area, a new emerging gold camp. We're on trend with some recent new discoveries, both of them by IM Gold, including Monster Lake, 433,000 ounces at 12 grams, and uh, the really exciting Nelligan deposit, 3.2 million ounces of gold, grading a gram. And Quebec is just a great place to be um, to be based out of. We have some uh, fantastic relationships with uh, the various uh, Quebec organizations there, and we, we just love operating there. So our 2020 program is underway. We've been doing our phase one program, which is mapping, prospecting, sampling, trenching, and we jumped right into our phase two program uh, about a month ago, and that includes diamond drilling, focusing, focusing at the fan camp property, which has several advanced uh, gold showings, which I will show it to you in a few minutes. We did a fairly fairly sizable um, financing several months ago, and this has allowed us to move ahead with our drilling program. So I'm going to pass over quickly to Oren, and he can go through the capital market slide here quickly. Uh, thanks, Rob. So here's a, a quick snapshot of our, our trading, trading profile, profile, ticker symbol uh, BLU. Uh, we began trading in February this year, 80 million shares outstanding roughly, uh, uh, and then on a fully diluted basis, just under $100 million dollars. Uh, market cap in and around $9 million, and, and the cash, uh, $2.4 million as of, as of June, the last reporting period. That the figure is going to be lower uh, today due to the exploration program, but, uh, but the Treasury is still, still very healthy at this point in time. Um, one item to point out here is despite our, our, our size, you know, sub $10 million market cap and early stage, we have a very strong institutional uh, shareholding, and, and most of these institutions came in in our, our most recent finance. We've got about 11 institutions that that hold the stock currently. Uh, so I'll turn it back to Rob now and he'll take you through the, uh, the project overview. Thanks, Oren. So a quick overview here. Uh, our property is very large. We have 51,000 hectares. Uh, we are the largest property um, holder in the, um, the Shibugamu camp. Uh, five main properties, the, the, the Moose Fan Camp, Moose East, Nisk, and Embry properties are, are what comprise our 51,000 hectares, underlain by some pretty significant regional deformation zones. And these are, are regionally, these are pipelines for numerous deposits that are on strike with us, including the Nelligan and Monster Lake, which I mentioned, but various other um, uh, deposits, historical mines and occurrences, which I'll point out in another slide coming up here. One of the important things are our property uh, has not been actively explored uh, in a big way since about the 1990s and about, about that time when gold was maybe $350 an ounce. So a lot of what we're coming up with and uh, exploring for now might have been walked over by the old timers in, uh, in previous decades of exploration. And there's not a lot of outcrop over our property. A lot of it is covered by, by soil, by uh, till cover, swamps and lakes. And this is typical Abitibi. So although it's challenging for us, it's also an opportunity because we believe there's a lot of um, hidden opportunities that haven't been uncovered yet. So as, as we pointed out earlier, it's been a busy year. We did our RTO to go public in February of this year, and we hit the ground running. 
we've we've grown our property to its current size. We've done some mergers and acquisitions, um, most notably with O3 Mining to acquire the Van Camp and Embry properties. We spent a lot of time digitizing and backing up um, uh, hundreds of historical reports and maps, bringing them into a digital format. We did our private placement. We put together our team and we hit the ground running with our exploration. So this map here just quickly shows where we're based. The smaller oval up at the top is the historical Shibugamu Chape mining camp. And that was a copper gold camp with about 3 billion pounds of copper and 4 million ounces of gold produced. South of that is the larger oval, which encompasses our five properties, which you can see in blue, the Moose, Fan Camp, Moose East, Nisk, and the Embry is up here. It's off of uh, those circles, but it's well within the camp as well. And, and we're highlighted by our proximity to the Nelligan deposit, the I Am Gold discovery, and the Monster Lake discovery, and various other historical mines or resources uh, along strike with us, including Philly Bear, Meston, and Joe Mann, Chevrier, and Fenton. So as I mentioned earlier, the property has been explored in the past. There's about 340 drill holes spread over the 51,000 hectares, but these are focused in a few select areas, and, and other than that, they're wide-spaced, a lot of anomalous results in the one, two, three gram uh, gold range were were uh, walked over by the old timers, thought to be of too low grade to be of economic interest. And back then they were absolutely right. But today it's a different story. Um, so what have we done? We've done a lot of aeromagnetic work over the last few years, which give us complete coverage of our property and some amazing targets are being generated from this information and we continue to use it on an ongoing basis. Uh, we've started our regional sampling and prospecting over the, over the properties. And most importantly, we started a diming drill program at the fan camp property. And this will be something I'll talk about in a couple of minutes here. So this slide here, once again, shows our property position and some of these major uh, deformation zones I'm referring to. The Gersherville deformation zone, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but it comes right through the middle of our moose property. And then about the middle, it splays off into three separate um, splays. One of them goes right through the Nelligan deposit another through the Philly Bear, Meston, and Joe Mann uh, deposits, and a third splay comes up right through our fan camp property up towards the Chevrier deposit. So looking at all of the historical information, we, we divided our, our, um, our exploration program into three priority target areas. Number one was our fan camp property, which we acquired earlier this year from O3 Mining because it has some historical showings on it, and it was an obvious starting place for us. Number two straddles this Gersherville deformation zone where it comes onto our property. And number three is where two of these deformation zones start to come close together. There's a lot of um, complex um, structural activity here, and what we believe to be good traps for potential gold mineralization. So let's talk real quickly about the fan camp property. Uh, it was discovered by Tech in the 1950s. They did drill about 105 drill holes, focused along this trend here where they discovered the A, B, D, and E zones, about a two-kilometer long trend. And there's a third zone here called the, the C zone, and that was uh, that's centered on the fan camp deformation zone. If you remember in the earlier slide, that big deformation zone that comes through. So the thing that attracted us when we looked at this property were some of these historical gold grades, including two meters of 10 grams, 0.9 meters of 20 grams, three meters of 12 and, and six meters of eight grams. And these are all at very shallow depths six meters, 10 meters, 12 meters, 11 meters. And that's sort of the, the thesis for the whole property. The old timers explored at surface down to maybe 50, 70, a few holes as deep as 100 meters vertical, but that's about it for the entire property. And this is the Abitibi, and we know that these systems can go down for long distances. So, uh, so we're, we're coming back, we're reevaluating this, 
and we're starting to trace through our drilling some of these um, these gold intercepts at depth, uh, where we're starting to see the beginnings of some some plunging mineralized shoots, uh, and, and and this is sort of an area that we're focusing on. In this whole trend, there's between two to six subparallel veins. These are maybe you know less than a meter to two or three meter wide veins or vein zones with brecciation, quartz, tourmaline, uh, carbon alteration, and um, so we started a, a trenching program. We wanted to uncover a lot of the. Um, the you know the surface exposures of this mineralization and that's pretty well done and the assays are are are, are pending for that uh, we've done some regional prospecting and we did a 14 hole drill program it's going to be about 3200 meters to test the down plunge and a long strike potential of the focusing on the a b and d zone so this next slide shows the, the drill holes in red that we've done. In gray are the historical drill holes, and in green are some of the trenches that we, we've, um, we've excavated as part of this program. And uh, hope, hopefully we'll be able to get some results here uh, fairly shortly. Labs are really backed up these days. This picture on the right shows uh, the drill on site as we started the program earlier in September. And just quickly, let's talk about the the other potential on the property. As I mentioned, um, the priority target area two was that long trend uh, where the Gersherville deformation zone strikes across our property. And that follows, if you can see down in the far right-hand corner at the bottom, the Nelligan deposit. This is the IM Gold deposit, 3.2 million ounces. It's a sediment-hosted gold deposit, low-grade, very atypical for the Abitibi, not atypical worldwide, but certainly in this neck of the woods, it's not something that the historical miners were looking for. So it's hosted in sediments, which is the light blue rock shown on this geology map. And that whole package trends to the northwest onto our property. And you'll see a lot of these um, these dots here with grades showing. These are actually RC till samples that were, were uh, explored by ESSO back in the 80s. And they were looking for uh, soil samples within the, the till at the till bedrock interface. And they did concentrate samples. And you can see these are all noted in PPBs. But there is an interesting cluster of grades and gold grains right at the sedimentary volcanic contact right along the Gersherville deformation zone. Another cluster on our property just down here. And we have a third cluster, a smaller one up here in our target area three. So these are um, one of the areas that we'll be looking at. We'd like to put some geophysics over this grid and do some ground IP resistivity work to see if we can fine tune some targets. And we've also been looking at a similar sort of target up here in, in target area three. Uh, our, our mag has also been very, uh, airborne mag work has been very helpful in, in fine tuning some of these targets. So uh, at the end of the season, we're, we're, we're thinking about uh, possibly doing a few drill holes to test some of these geophysical anomalies right near the end of our program. So just a little bit of a, uh, a comparison here on, um, on ourselves versus some of the peers in the area that are exploring. Vanstar is in the a JV with I am Gold on the Nelligan deposit. They hold 25%. Dore Copper is a little bit further to the east, but also up in the old historical um, mo copper gold mining camp. And they have a few deposits there, which they are advancing. And of course, Northern Superior is our neighbor directly to the south, and um, they have uh, the the on strike potential of the of the Nelligan deposit as well, but also some other interesting uh, opportunities uh, in other parts of Canada. But you know, as we release results, uh, we're, we're looking for a, a, a re rating that might take us uh, closer to a, um, a market cap in this range. Just quickly, the, the management team, uh, some of you might be aware of Chad Williams. Chad is the chairman and director of, 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 Red Cloud, of Red Cloud, but also of Blue Thunder. 
and uh, he's the he's the person who was instrumental in putting the company together. So uh, great to have him on board. Myself, Oren Baranowski, and we have a great board as well with a lot of uh, a lot of background and a lot of financial and technical background. So just a quick summary. Uh, we, we have a very large land position in an emerging gold district, a lot of significant production, uh, historical production and new discoveries adjacent to us. We have been running our fully funded initial drill program, testing a high grade gold target. And we have a great team, a good mix of technical, financial and strategic experience. So I'll, I'll stop talking there and uh, hopefully we have a few minutes for a couple of questions. Thanks, Rob. Uh, we, do, we do have a few minutes. So um, I was wondering if you could tell us about uh, the activities you've been up to in the field uh, most recently and, and how much work you've gotten through. Yeah. Um, so we, we've, we have been working aggressively on our, our regional prospecting program. But the main thing that we've really focused on was the trenching and the diamond drilling at Fan Camp. Most of that is wrapping up now, um, and, and we're really at the mercy of the lab. So, you know, we've submitted a lot of uh, samples, and we're, we're just waiting for assays to come back. I think a lot of companies are in the same situation as us. Uh, things are really getting bogged down at the labs now. But, um, you know, look, look forward to some information coming out here shortly. And the trenching, was that uh, all on the fan camp property or on, on several of the different properties? Yeah, you know, our initial uh, trenching was all on fan camp. Uh, we really wanted to focus on understanding the surface exposures of the mineralization, but we also tested a big part of the trenching was to look at some some parallel uh, anomalies and other structural um, structurally interpreted targets off of the main vein trend. So it was a bit of a uh, exploration trenching program as well. Okay, and and the drilling uh, was focusing on. I imagine previous areas at fan camp that uh, had some, some good high grade results. That's right. We wanted to, you know, part of the program was really to confirm some of these historical results. We didn't specifically twin a hole, but we drilled in the area where they got some good results, but we also wanted to expand along strike and down dip some of these historical intercepts and also uh, get more confidence in the fact that there's more than two or three or four sub-parallel veins. We believe there might be quite a few in this area. And the final thing we wanted to do was test the theory of these these plunging uh, mineralized shoots, which, you know, early uh, stage interpretations uh, identified uh, one main one at the A zone and one main one at the B zone. Some, so with several holes, we're testing that theory as well. And, and are you currently drilling at present now, or, or are you in between uh, uh, programs? It, it, it's pretty much wrapping up now. Um, we, you know, the, the, the rig is, um, you know, finished the last hole now, and uh, we'll, we're, you know, just compiling all of the results. We're bringing everything together, sending assays off. There's a lot of logging and, and data compilation to go on, but... Um, um, you know, we are sending a lot of assays off to the lab, and we're we're waiting for results to come back. And and that was approximately two to three thousand meters. Yeah, in that range, it was um, yeah, probably hovering around uh, a three thousand meters that was done there. Right, and so I imagine the the next phase won't uh, get going until you've had time to get all those assays back and do some more interpretation. Absolutely. We, we want to be able to sit down, digest all of that, and um, be able to then plan the next drill program there um, based on our drilling. So, uh, you know, time to roll our sleeves up and, uh, and uh, start interpreting all of that data. Right. Uh, and so uh, any, any idea from the labs when you'd be able to get the results back that you could uh, press to the market? It's, it's hard to tell. Uh, you know, they're, you, you can't push them that much, but at the same time, they're basically saying we're going as fast as we can. And uh, I think they're just bogged down, and I don't think any lab is any different than the ones we're dealing with. Right. Yeah, hearing a lot of the same. Okay, well, thank you very much, gentlemen. That's our, our time for today. Uh, and I uh, appreciate you being with us and, and all of the participants as well. Thanks so much.